we have a objective of uh, escaping local maxima or local optima. So, remember our algorithm for hill climbing. And it basically says that uh, if C is the current node and if N is the next node, whether you should move from a node to a next node and the algorithm essentially says that if the if the best node that you get from move gen of C, which is basically N. So, you look at all the neighborhood of C, C is a current node and take the best amongst them, max or min value depending on what you are doing and if that is better than C, then you basically move to C and you put this in a loop. So, it basically looks at the neighborhood and so, so keep the SAT problem in mind or the TSC problem in mind where we are looking at the candidate solutions and the neighboring candidates and solutions. Now, what was happening with this algorithm is that it along some let us say one dimensional problem, you would uh, end up uh, here and stop here because all neighbors are worse than this and when in practice the real optimum may be here or somewhere else a bit farther away essentially. So, what we want to now look at this is how do we explore the space more so that we do not get stuck at a local optima in this case a local maxima essentially. Hmm. So, what hill climbing does is exploitation. of the gradient. It basically follows the gradient. If there is a neighbor which is better, it goes to that, otherwise it gets stuck. What, explore, what this escape requires is the ability for exploration. So, the simplest, so first let us look at a deterministic algorithm uh, which will allow us to explore more of the space and what do we mean by explore that we are allowed to go against the heuristic function. Uh, it, it does not mean that you can only go to better states, you can go to states which are not necessarily better. So, of course, then we have to work out the termination criteria and things like that. So, let us look at a variation of this algorithm which says that. Uh, n will get the best as before, but we will introduce another feature which is allowable or allowed and we just simply put this in the loop. So, we are not checking whether it is better than we here we had the condition if the best neighbor is better than C, 
then you move from n to c. Here we are simply saying just move to the best neighbor, but not just the best neighbor, but some, some something called allowed essentially, which we will look at now essentially. So, before we come to what this allowed means, it basically means that you can move to the best neighbor, which means that even if you are at a maxima, you can go to a neighbor which is not better than that essentially. So, that is the key first thing that you must remember essentially. Hmm. Now, supposing we were to allow this, then always go to the best neighbor, which the criteria that you know, it does not have to be better than the current norm. Then how do we stop? That is one, one small problem, but there is a bigger problem. And the bigger problem pertains to the fact that if I am stuck at this local maxima, how do I get to that maxima? So, the first problem of how do we stop, we will say that put some other termination criteria. So, tell some It can be simply time based or it can be simply that we are not finding a better solution after a certain amount of time and so on. You can always store the best So, like looking at it in general in optimization terms that in this process always keep track of the best solution that you have found ever, even if you have moved away from it remember that that was the best solution. So, always keep track of the best solution, so that you can always do. Given that we are now exploring the st state space and this algorithm says that for example, in this case in a one dimensional world, there are two neighbors here and here. So, I am allowed to move to one of them. In a, in a larger space of course, there are many neighbors, so you can move to the best amongst them essentially. But to illustrate the point, illustrate the difficulty that this algorithm has. Supposing I I am allowed to, so I came from here to here and then I am allowed to move here, that is allowed because I am no longer saying that it should be better than what I am in. What will happen in the next step? Next step this will have these two neighbors, this one and this one. What will the algorithm do? No, that we that is an independent thing. So, we are just now talking about the behavior of the algorithm. Where will it go next? Yeah. Unfortunately, it will go back to this place. Even if it takes one step down, but this one says that still the best criteria is still there. Go to the best neighbor. So, that one is still the best neighbor essentially. So, it will go back there. How do we get around this? Yeah, that is where this allowed thing is coming in. So, remember we had this idea of a closed list when we started doing the state space search and what closed list said that do not go back to the same node again that you have seen. So, what we could do? So, we are looking at this now. One way to do this is to maintain a maintain a circular list. Maintain a circular cube of some finite size. So, you know what is a circular cube that you keep overwriting as you go round and round the circle, you are allowed to overwrite, but uh, some k number of elements will always be stored in the cube, but you can you are allowed to overwrite. So, it is this is like a short term memory, it is saying that these are the last k nodes that I went to and I am not allowed to go back to them but I can I am allowed to go back to any other neighbor. So, what what with this allowed factor what we are really doing is that given a node C that we start with, we generate all the successors, all the neighbors from this neighbor we disallow some. So, we say this move is not allowed this move is not allowed and this move is not allowed. So, this is that allowed thing that we are trying to do here. 
but from the remaining move to the best one. Another way of doing this is the following that keep track of what moves you made in the recent past essentially. So, for example, if you are doing SAT and let us say for simplicity sake that you are changing only one bit at a time. So, essentially move says that change the ith bit where i could be any bit essentially. If a bit is changed, in the last t moves and disallow it. Notice that this is slightly different from maintaining a closed loop. In a closed list, we are maintaining or candidates and saying we will not generate the same candidate again. In this example, we are saying that if we have changed, let us say the fifth bit now, then for the next t moves, I am not allowed to change the fifth bit essentially. So, what will happen? Uh, I can maintain, for example, a memory, an array called m, uh, which will start with uh, 0 for everything. That is one way of doing it. So, let us say I have a 9 bit problem. 9 bit set I so how many does this have uh, 3 4 7 let me add two more yes. I have a 9 bit set like this I can change any one of those 9 bits and move to the best amongst them now supposing I have changed the fourth bit that is the best that I am going to do so what am I doing I am I, I have a evaluation function for every node or, or every candidate solution I have a evaluation function and we said that for SAT it could be the number of clauses satisfied or something like that essentially. So, I have a evaluation function and I generate all these neighbors and just move to the best amongst them does not matter whether it is it, it's, it's better or not, but I am allowed to move to the best amongst them. So, if I change this now let us say, so this t is called the taboo tenure. And this algorithm is actually called taboo search. So, this particular spelling of taboo, I mean we are more used to taboo, T A B O O, but it, the meaning is still the same. This comes from some, I think Fiji Islands or, or Tonga or somewhere, uh, where they use this spelling of the word. And basically, it means disallowed essentially. It is, uh, um, it is a taboo move that you, you are not allowed to make that move essentially. So, if I am allowed to, if I decide on a taboo tenure of t, let us say in, in this example, let us say 3 three or something or 4 or something, then if I have changed this one, I could say that okay, make this 4, see that everything else remains 0. So, this is like a array which tells me whether I am allowed to change that uh, bit or not. If that value is non-zero, I am not allowed to change, only if the value is 0, I am allowed to change. So, after the first move, I am allowed not allowed to change the fourth bit, but I am allowed to change any other bit. After the second move, 
this 4 will come down to 3 automatically and some other bit supposing I change this bit this will become 4 everything else will remain the same. So, you understand what I am saying that uh, this is at uh, t equal to 1 this is t equal to 2 then t equal to 3 sorry not this t or we will use the term t t which is a kind of a more standard term. So, t t stands for tabu tenure. So, if my tabu tenure is 4 then and that is time this t is time the first cycle the second cycle the third cycle then in this next cycle this will become 2 this will become 3 and some other bit will become 4 and eventually this will become 1 and and then become 0. which is when I am allowed to change it essentially. So, this will go to 2 meanwhile this will go to 3 and so on. So, after having changed this here then for 1, 2, 3, 4 cycles I am not allowed to change it, but now it the value has become 0. So, I am allowed to change it essentially. This is just one way of implementing this you can insert simply for every bit keep a time stamp of when it was last changed and do an explicit comparison with that and decide whether you know the current time is more than 4 units from that time when it was changed you could do it in either way essentially, but this is a kind of a standard way of, of doing this essentially. So, for, for SAT you could maintain an array which traditionally we call it M which stands for memory for TSP we could maintain a triangular matrix. So, this is uh, 1 to 9 and this is 1 to 9 for example, if it is a 9 city problem and you could keep track of which edge that remember that every square in this will correspond to an edge. So, let us say the 7th and the 4. So, the edge between 7 and 4 that I removed that or something like that. So, I can keep track of that in a TSP like problem as well essentially. The basic idea in taboo search is to have this notion that you do not allow moves you have made recently. So, that you do not go back to the same local maxima from which you are trying to escape that is the basic motivation do not go back to the same maxima. Now, obviously, if you look at this way of doing taboo search that you are controlling which bits to change then given any two bits. So, for example, I start with uh, uh, let us say bit uh, 2 bits which are 1 1 to, to start with and uh, then this gets changed to 0 1 essentially. So, that means, I have changed the first bit and so this is some substring here I have changed this bit I am not allowed to change it for 4 units. Then after this let us say I change this other one 0 1 0 sorry 0 0 I change the other bit as well. So, if I made these 2 bits where I have changed this bit it this this substring has become 0 1 then I change the other bit this has become 0 0 I have lost the ability to move to 1 combination which is the 1 0 combination because of this taboo that I am doing that I am not allowed to change either of these 2 bits for the next 4 rounds I cannot change this to 1 0 that will not be allowed. Basically. So, I am moving I, I might lose out on some things, but in general experimentally it has been found that this taboo search works well with uh, these kind of problems essentially. Right. So, we just observed that you cannot move to this 1 0 from here essentially. What if that 1 0 really happened to be the solution or something like that. So, actually the more detailed taboo al search algorithm allows you to make an exception to this barring of certain moves essentially and the exception can be made under what is called as an aspiration criteria. which some confusion sometimes I get into spelling. So, the expression criteria says that 
if all allowed neighbors are bad, so I will just write all are bad, by bad we mean worse than current. And a tabu move leads to n which is better than best. Then allow the move. So, obviously, our goal is to optimize the evaluation function or the objective function of that we are working on. And if we are getting access to a good move, then we should not lose it. So, this aspiration criteria says that if all these allowed neighbors, the ones which are not crossed out, are worse than my current node C, and if one of those barred neighbors or one of those sabu neighbors is better than the best. By best, I mean this thing that you store the best solution that you have found. If I can find a node which is better than this also, then you allow that exception. So, tabu in general, recent moves are tabu, but we can make an exception if one of them in a bad situation when the other moves are bad gives us a much better solution. So, for example, if let us say the value of this node is 27, according to some, let us say I have a 50 clause set to solve, and this node is satisfying 27 of those 50 clauses, and all these nodes which are this allowed are less than 27, and if this one of them happens to be let us say 40 somehow and the best that I have seen is only 35 or something like that, then I will allow this move and that is the aspiration criteria. So, again you can see that some of this design of such algorithms is kind of you know little bit of an art, you are trying to devise algorithms which will work, which will give you good solutions and so on. And what taboo search does is that it basically gives you a deterministic mechanism to say that you can go past local maxima and explore the state further essentially. So, it does this by having this taboo tenure which says that for a certain period of time do not make the same move again essentially. Another feature which has sometimes been used is called the frequency based method. So, I have a frequency table, okay, so for this 9 bits, so let us say this was changed 18 times, this was changed 7 times, then 6 times and so on essentially. How many times did I change that bit essentially? So, I can also bias the algorithm towards moves which have been made less often essentially. So, for example, if somewhere here there is a bit which has been changed only twice in my whole this thing and everything else is large number of times, then I may want to say that try and change this bit and see if something good comes out of it. Remember that what these numbers are, these are the frequency of how many times you have changed that bit essentially. This is simply like a counter which tells you whether you are allowed to change that bit or not. If you want to bias your algorithm or push it towards those areas which the heuristic function is not taking it to, why did you not move this bit? Because whenever this bit was generated, it is the node it generated was not the best amongst the neighbors and so it never got changed essentially. So, if you want to push the search into that direction, you can bias the taboo algorithm by saying that uh, modify your evaluation function. So, eval of n let us call it eval prime of L is eval of n 
which is the function that we are using to compute the heuristic function that we were calling, but now, but we are calling it an evaluation function because it optimization community calls it an eval function minus some constant times frequency of n. This is not very good notation because n is really a node and here it is a bit that is being changed the index of the bit. So, let me just call it uh, frequency of b n the bit which makes leads you to this nth node essentially. So, so as long as it is clear we will use some notation here. So, essentially what it is saying is that you are you are moving from c you are considering this move from c to n from a node c to node n when you are evaluating this node n take into account how frequently this particular move has been made which means which bit has been changed and give a penalty for those bits which have been changed very often. So, if the frequency is very high the evaluation value for the resulting node will be decreased more and if the frequency is less than this. So, this is like a penalty. In our case, it is penalty for changing a bit too often. If you are change, if you are changing that bit all the time, then this evaluation function kind of penalizes it and says that no, no, you have changed this bit too many times. I will reduce the evaluation value to by this amount essentially. So, in the end of course, you can have this basic vanilla taboo search, then you can add the aspiration criteria to say that sometimes you do not make moves taboo and then you can have a general increasing bias towards newer areas by saying that more frequent moves will be penalized essentially. So, this was a deterministic approach to trying to escape local maxima. So, let us move towards uh, stochastic methods or randomized methods. Okay. So, uh, what we have seen so far is a deterministic approach to escaping from local maxima. Let us look at uh, stochastic or randomized Okay. So, we will look at a couple of them, uh, we will start with some very simple thing today. So, the focus is still on exploration, how can we make the search go into newer areas. Okay. So, you must keep in mind these two aspects of search, one is exploitation of the gradient which is what hill climbing does very interesting that it just looks at the neighborhood and goes to the best neighbor. What taboo search did was that it modified that a little bit and allowed you to go to the best neighbor even if it was not better than that. Exploration simply says that somehow you must allow the algorithm to go into different areas and what stochastic or randomized methods say is that give some degree of randomness to the movement. So, just imagine this search algorithm searching through this search space and exploitation simply says that just follow the gradient and now we are saying do not always follow the gradient, but do something different at, at some time essentially. Now, the extreme example of randomized movement is a random walk
and random walk we can simply write as saying uh, generate n is a random neighbor of c and put this in a loop so our random walk basically just takes says that just take one step in some direction basically of course we can add on other stuff to this algorithm saying that keep track of the best node that you have seen so far and that kind of thing but otherwise it is purely random itself from a given node c it will just randomly choose one neighbor and go to that essentially no comparison of evaluation function nothing essentially but of course you can keep track of the best one and so far and so forth now obviously a random walk is not going to be a great way for solving an optimization problem because first of all it is not even systematic remember that we started off by saying that some searches are complete or systematic which means that they explore the entire space hill climbing taboo search they are not systematic they don't guarantee that they will explore the entire space and this is an extreme example it will just go off in some random direction essentially so what we really need to find is ways which are somewhere between hill climbing hill climbing is an extreme of exploitation and random walk is an extreme of exploration so it is there is zero exploitation in that only exploration whereas here in hill climbing there is zero exploration in the sense that it never wavers from the path that has been shown to it and there's complete exploitation we want algorithms which will be somewhere in between essentially so today i will just give you an intuition of the algorithm that we are going to study uh, and in the next class we will look at it in more detail the basic idea is make a random move with a probability which is proportional to improvement in well in so what i was saying here that first of all i am talking about a random move so i am no longer saying that generate all the successors i am just saying make a random move which means you are at some given node c and choose a random successor n just somehow generate one successor n but move to that with a probability which is proportional to how better that move n is from c as compared to c how how better that candidate n is compared to c so the implication of this is the following that i am not saying that n should be better than c i am only saying that if n is better than c then there is a greater probability of making the move if n is worse than c there is lesser probability of making that move and secondly it depends on the magnitude so if i look at this value eval n minus eval c so let us say i am doing a maximization problem which means the more positive this is the better for me i want to build an algorithm which will say that the more positive this is the greater should be the probability of making the move but allow a move even if this is negative just to include the exploration feature but with lesser probability so i want to bias my search towards better moves 
but I do not want to stop it from making bad moves. Bad moves meaning moves which decrease the evaluation function value essentially, which go against the gradient essentially. So, we will look at the details in the next class, but uh, let me ask you one question at this moment. When I say make a move with a probability, so let us say this probability is p and I give you a value p, how will you make this move probable? When you, if, you, if you were to implement this algorithm, how do you make a move probabilistically in an algorithm that you are writing? You and so, you generate a random number in the range 0 to 1 and if that number happens to be greater than p, you make the move, if the number happens to be less than p, you will do not make the move. So, so, eventually the move is either made or it is not made, but it is made with the probability p and then for that you have to generate a random number. So, uh, what are we after? We are after an algorithm which will have this stochastic flavor, which means that it, it will look at a neighbor and may or may not make a move, but it should be biased towards better moves, but not barred from making bad moves. So, somehow I have to devise a way of <coughs> computing this p as a function of this difference in the evaluation function in such a way that this behavior is manifested essentially. So, maybe I will ask you to think about this uh, uh, and we will write, it is not a very difficult thing to do. The only thing you have to be careful is that be this being probability, uh, it should come in the range 0 to 1 and it should satisfy this criteria that the that the larger this is. So, if you were to plot this on the x axis, then the more you go to the right hand side, the probability should tend to 1 and the more you go to the left hand side, the probability should tend to 0 essentially. So, think about a function which will do that and we will specify it in the next class and the algorithm which is based on that. So, we will stop here. Essentially.